Today I have here with me my brother. Yes. <laughs> my little brother. Yes. Not so little anymore. Yes. <laughs> and uh, I want to share with you guys a bit of our story as siblings. As I hear all the time from clients of mine, people that I talk to when I'm speaking about the rift that they have with their siblings, the the, how it's really hard, how it can be really heavy to relate to their siblings. And, um, you know, we went through a lot. We're really close. We also went through a lot. And so I wanted to give you some insight into our journey and what we've done to create a relationship that feels pretty solid, right? Yeah. Between the two of us. So that's what I wanted to let you in on today. So given that, I'm gonna start off with, you know, like I said, we're six years apart. And so when I was, you know, obviously when he was a baby, I was already six years old. So it's a pretty big gap. And so some of you might relate to this if you have a big gap in your relationship with your siblings. And so what my version of what started to happen was that because there was this big gap between the two of us, I sort of took on this role of becoming like a second mom, you know, like I'm responsible for him. Third of, parent. <laughs> third parent, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, and, 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 and there was a way that I took that on, but it was also like our parents put us in that positioning too in some way, right? Like- Put you. Well, put me in that positioning, yeah. Probably. Yeah, because it was just like, Okay, you gotta take care of him. He's your little brother. This is things that we even say to uh, our children as parents, you know? And because there was such a big gap, I really took that on and I was just like, okay, this is like a part of my job. And yet, I didn't want it when I was younger either. Cause there was lots of times, right? You wanna tell the story of how much you wanted to like hang out with me when you were little? Oh, I mean, yeah, for sure. I mean. Uh, she would be always hanging out with her friends and then I always wanted to join just because I don't want to be left behind. So she was forced to <laughs> take me everywhere <laughs> with her. So yeah, that was part of, that was part of her problem. <laughs> Not <laughs> yeah. a me problem. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's a story that we always tell about how I left him at the spaghetti factory. There was yeah. this restaurant. Well, it wasn't that she did. It was a true story. She left me at the spaghetti factory. <laughs> well, I was out with her and her friends, and then um, we were all ready to leave, and I had to go to the bathroom. And so I went to the bathroom, and then I came back to the lobby, and there was nobody to be found. <laughs> so I didn't know what to do. So I think I called. I think I had, because at that time, there was no cell phones. So I had the um, hostess call the house and somehow be like, hey. Uh, <laughs> well, he did that, but I realized yeah. after we had left <laughs> yeah. that I had left my brother. So, yeah. so we had come back and picked him up. But that was like, you know, a little traumatizing for him. <laughs> was it? No, it wasn't traumatizing. You I just, about it like I just, yeah, I talk about it like it is just because I like to give you shit yeah. about it. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. But um, no, I wasn't traumatized. I didn't cry. And yeah, no, so, not you. Uh, yeah. Um, well, I just wanted to share that because that's kind of what our dynamic was like. Yeah. It's like it, that that signifies it. It was just like, you know, yes, he's my little brother. Yes, I love him so much. Like I remember even him being really little and being so jealous of somebody else, like took him or something like that, like to to hold him. Um, but yet, like this resistance of like, why do you have to be like? everywhere with me and why 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 do you have to follow me around you know mm -hmm. i have to take him to sleepovers and stuff yeah so because he would cry all night so this is that's the well, beginnings that's, that's our mom's fault <laughs> just so you guys know that it's our mom's fault for trying to force her to take me everywhere so that's mom's fault <laughs> to a certain degree but uh, maybe i was a pain in the butt but i guess when you're a parent you gotta deal with a kid that's a pain in the butt mm, yeah mm -hmm. well i'm sure our mom will love hearing that part oh yeah <laughs> yeah well she'll be all right <laughs> yeah so anyhow that's the beginnings you know of our relationship is mm -hmm. there anything you want to add um not so much i mean yeah when we were growing up there was that separation 
But we still were close, but we did fight a lot. We fought a lot about the stupidest things. I mean, I would definitely, I mean, I'm sure I, I definitely, as a little brother, egged it on a lot, too. I mean, whether it be um, we had a sticker book fight that we had that I remember. Then there was just uh, random things that um, she used to talk a lot on the phone. So I used to try to bug the crap out of her. And she had her own phone line, Miss Brat, over here. But, um, no, but that was our younger years because, and then by the time I knew it, like, uh, she said, because we were six years apart when I was in seventh grade, she was already off to college. So then there was this whole period of time where we weren't even in the same household. Yeah. So, um, but up until then, yes, but we still had a love because I remember I missed her a lot when she left. So, yeah. Even though we fought, it was love. Yeah, yeah. And I remember like just recently, um, well, not so recently, but like in the last year, I think I asked you, did you feel like an only child like after I left? And you said you did. Um, yeah, well, not an only child, but yeah, pretty much like the only one in the house. Yeah, because at that time, I mean, I think I was just starting to be what, 12 13 years old so that's right around that time frame as a as a human being to like remember everything and well from the ages of what like to like seven eight that's when you're just getting into like school and stuff like that and then by that time um you had already left and then there was she was in boston and then um then from Boston, she went and got a job in New York City. So she was gone from Cincinnati for how many? I mean. Yeah, a long time. Like since I was 18, I, I, once I left, I was gone. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, we grew up pretty in Cincinnati. Much, pretty much up until about my, yeah, because I was, I was alone um, from seventh grade to 12th grade yeah. um, in the house. And then at, after I graduated from uh, high school, I went to Ohio State. So I was able to. Ohio State's an hour and a half away from uh, Cincinnati, which is like Columbus. Um, so it was just far enough, but just close enough that I can come back and forth from Cincinnati to um, college. But yeah, I mean, since then, yeah, I've pretty much been the only person in the house or child in the house. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, that was, I think it struck me because I think I had never thought about it in that way because even though I had left at the age of 18 and you know him being six years younger than me like I never thought like oh wow he was pretty much growing up like in those adolescent years on his own and it was a moment for me to be like wow you really didn't really have me around at all you know yeah um and so that was there was I'll connect this back to what what I'm going to be sharing as we keep going but that was a moment where I was like, wow, okay. I never thought about it that way. Like I never realized that sure. you experienced it in that way. Um, so yeah, I think what would happen as he got older, I got older college years, I lived in New York, like he would come and visit, he would, he would do things that I didn't like him to do at times. And I was super controlling, like mm -hmm. I was, super controlling you can tell them what i was like. yeah so i would say after like during my college years our relationship got really bad well not bad but like bad in the sense that yeah we i guess we didn't really talk that much at all we would maybe go weeks without talking um yeah. maybe i don't even know how Weeks, maybe longer, I don't remember at this point, but I know there was time periods where we didn't communicate. Yeah, she would just always kind of, I felt like that she was not approving of who I was or who I was, what I had became or just not approving of anything that I was doing or how I was developing as a person. And that was a big problem between us during those times because she kept kind to um, control what what I was doing and how I was doing it. So we did definitely didn't have a proper communication at that time. And 
Oh man, we had a lot of anger. A lot of anger. There was times where I would just <laughs> punch you in the face. Um, same, same. Don't have those feelings anymore. <laughs> Sometimes. Um, sometimes, but that I would say about a five to six year stretch pretty much up until you got because once I graduated from college She had just got him. She got married right away that 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 year. I graduated mm -hmm. so um, Just coming out of college. I didn't have anything um, Straight into Kavita's life again <laughs> But yeah Yeah, and I think there is like some of some of the pain that we experienced as younger children which is what i'm going to help you start to see is connected to our storyline and where we're at right now is like my pain was he he was always following me around and like it felt like he needed to be a part of my life so i had like resistance to that right yeah. and then also my pain was that i needed to be like his mom right like i needed to tell him what to do how to do it take care of him and your pain was what i just wanted a sister um, a friend to play with and that's it yeah but I think you had some pain around like feeling like I was sometimes a center of attention in the family at times and no that no. wasn't no I never thought you were the center of attention really I mean I don't think that 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 was what was going through my head more so just like the fact that you were trying to control and then um, there were times where you just wanted things done the way you wanted them. Yeah. It was just, it was just your way. That was it. So, like, because getting into or getting out of the my senior year, I, you had already started planning your wedding, and she was a bridezilla. So, <laughs> at least in my opinion. Um, but yeah, it was just. But at that point, it was all yeah. It was back to all about you. And it wasn't that I did not feel that I wasn't present or that there was no attention on me, but it was just um, between us, it was always about you. Mm -hmm. And then there wasn't anything that was um, compassion, not compassionate or just, there was no friendship. Yeah. There was just no friendship at the time. It was just like, help me, help me do this, do that. Mm -hmm. um, and then that's the perspective. Mm -hmm. And then when I didn't do something or showed up for something, then you were super upset about it. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, that's kind of what I re 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 remember yeah. during those times. Got it. Okay, yeah. So your pain was more so that I wasn't being a sister or you, you didn't feel like you had a sister or a friend. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I remember going to Landmark, which is a self-development course. Mm -hmm. It's over a weekend. And this was back in 2010, 2011. And um, through that course, I remember realizing that, oh my God, I've actually been playing this role with my brother as if I'm his mom. I didn't know that before. Like I just thought I was being a good sister. I thought I was taking care of you. I thought mm. I was like loving you, right? Like that was my viewpoint mm. of it. And so I went to Landmark and I was just like, oh, this is, this is the thing that's between us because we were getting into these huge blow up fights um, where he would come to New York and literally like leave the house, slam the door, I'd be pissed and we'd be like upset with each other for days even, you know, mm -hmm. and it was bad. And so when I realized this, I remember we were on a family vacation in Florida, we we're in the ocean, at least this is what I remember. We we're in the ocean because I was being very intentional and I was like, hey, and I came to him and I was just like, I have realized that you don't need another mom. Like you have a mom, you don't need another mom. Mm -hmm. And I've been playing that role with you and I don't wanna play that role anymore. Like mm -hmm. I give it up, I don't want it anymore. And I wanna be your sister mm -hmm. and I wanna be like a friend mm -hmm. and I want us to be friends. Do you remember that? Yeah, I, I, I remember. I, yeah, we, I think we were before Lauderdale, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think so, yeah. How did that feel when you heard that? Um, there was a shift in the relationship, so I made, uh, I started also, I had to shift myself too, at the same time, from 
putting her in that position of her making her be like my or putting her like like a mom so I was also making her out to be a mom and didn't make her let her be a sister either so I had to make a shift and she had to make a shift and I think when she but but she came up with it first like you 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 came out and said that and then it there there that's where the shift happened so um I mean I think obviously there were times where we still went back by accident or not by accident by our triggered or um but we're able to work through things a lot better and treat each other like a brother and sister versus me uh, as a as a as a mom or, or as a controlling parent for that matter is what i had in my head of her yeah yeah i remember that was like the biggest change for us you know mm -hmm. and and it wasn't like he's saying it's not like oh it's overnight or anything it was just like just me declaring like I no longer wanted to be in that role because when I thought about it when I really looked at it inside of myself I was like this role sucks like I don't even think I know who my brother actually is mm -hmm. because I have been under this impression that I know more than him I know better than him mm -hmm. um, you know like literally like a parent mm -hmm. does to to a child often a parent doesn't even take the time to really understand their child because they're so busy being a parent and busy believing what they believe about their child or trying to protect them or save them from things or you know guide them in a specific way because that's what you believe is right you mm -hmm. know and i was doing that and i didn't even know you mm -hmm. and and that realization was really heartbreaking for me actually you mm -hmm. know um because I, I i really thought i was like the sister of the year you know like that's literally how i saw myself um like such a loving sister and this is what we do this is this is how what we do in our families in particular mm -hmm. like we just think we're doing it right because we're doing it out of love we're doing it out of care and yet the other person is responding in a way that is like you know you're mad at me you're upset you're you're mm -hmm. you're you're defensive you're dismissive and that feedback i wasn't taking in i wasn't mm -hmm. taking in that okay there's something off in, in that this and then, then i shut down and i don't share i don't tell you things about my life because i don't want you to know and then 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 you don't then you don't get to know me so yeah i mean you, those are the things that happen yeah yeah, I think you were also afraid that I would, like, judge you. Yeah, even to today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're working on that. <laughs> um, so, so, yeah, and I think, like, that's what I see so much within sibling relationships yes. is that, you know, they you don't realize where it stems from the dynamic that you have created between the two of you but it's not actually about the two of you what has happened is that your parents our parents and they didn't know this either this is not to like blame parents no. but it's they they didn't know either but they put us in these roles and we also subconsciously accepted those roles yeah. like okay you're like a child to me you yeah. kind of accepted that role yourself well, I was a I'm the youngest in the family, so I've accepted, yeah, to a certain degree, the role, that role. Yeah, and then I accepted this role of being, like, another parent to you, mm. you know? And then we were playing that out. Meanwhile, all we really wanted was to be friends. And mm. that didn't feel like we had access to any of that or even knew that what that looked like or what that, how that was possible, mm -hmm. honestly. You know, and, and so what we did, what I did in that moment when I said, I don't want to be a, your mom anymore, is I gave that role back to my parents literally you know because there's also ways in sibling relationships where we hear our parents talk about the other kid right like so mm -hmm. i hear my mom and dad say oh um, yeah anand is you know sometimes he he can be lazy mm -hmm. or he can be um slower you know and then i start to think of him like that too but that's not my version of who my brother is that's my mm -hmm. parents version of who my brother is right mm -hmm. and so i had to catch all those little moments where even i was like that's mom and dad's viewpoint of you now what's mm -hmm. my viewpoint of you Correct. and how do i create that relationship with you where i'm not taking all of that information into our relationship mm -hmm. right mm -hmm.
So, so once we did that, like, what do you feel like opened up inside of you towards me with that shift? I know you kind of shared it a little bit, but yeah, well, I mean, well, the fact that like, uh, I mean, it's to, to be honest, it's like I said before, it's not a, always just a one way shift, but the fact that she shifted allowed me to go, allowed me to have that space to also start to think about okay she's no longer my parent i would like or take that mindset out and look at her as 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 my sister and start to open up a little bit to her too i have to work on that part myself but um just but when when she said that it just opened up the the playing field for us to be able to communicate from that perspective like we're able to then now navigate through each other's conversations and or feelings um not as me uh, picturing her as a third parent and or her actually being a sister you know um so there's a different type of bond that then happened for sure yeah, yeah. i mean that's why we're closer today than we've ever had been before yeah. in our lives but yeah well, now we're 40 and 45, <laughs> 46. But yeah. but yeah, it's still it's still a thing. What what do you think like had cuz like in some way we're committed to each other, right? Like yeah. we're committed like the base level uh, I should say the baseline is that we are actually committed to, to being in relationship with one another. So yeah. what makes you want to be in relationship with me the fact that that now i mean you're you're there for me whenever i need you and and the fact that you're there for me not just as a person to tell me what to do or get me out of a jam or, or complication if i needed it but mainly just there as a as a, as a support um as a, as, a, as a sister you know like if I have an issue with even my, or if I have an issue with my, um, our parents, uh, that she's there now, n not to take sides, but there just to be a sister and, and a friend. So, um, I mean, that's why our relationship is the way it is, um, because we're able to move through it differently. Yeah. Um, and yeah, no, because I, I want you in my life now. It's not like I didn't before. I would have to just not that I wasn't able to open up, but now I can. So there, there's always going to be that that dynamic that other people may not have when they're with their brothers or sisters. They lose, um, you know, they get into fights or they butt heads or they don't like they don't uh, see each other's perspective or um they're one's trying to tell the other one one's judging the other ones for their actions or um you know then you're not able to communicate or you're not wanting to share with one another and then you just have a superficial relationship that she's just my sister and she's there for me but she's not there for me but we don't have that anymore yeah so, yeah. yeah i mean i think between siblings when there's so much hurt because that's what happens, right? Over time, especially, right? As you get older and older and things are not really resolved, you don't really see the role that you've been playing with your sibling. You don't really know how that's impacted them. They've never shared with you the ways that they see you, mm -hmm. you know? And so then you have to face some of that. So you're not having that real, I call that like a clearing conversation, right? Mm -hmm. Like where you go back to like how you saw me, how I saw you, mm -hmm. how do we clear that out mm -hmm. and then be friends, right? Yeah. Like where I really every day when I'm interacting with you, it sounds weird when I say, say put on, but I like really embody this place of how do I believe in you? How do I support you? Mm -hmm. And how do I, um, encourage you you know and i think like that interaction between the two of us is what's built built it to what it is today but where i was going with the hurt thing in siblings is that often we hold on to that hurt and we don't want to let go of that hurt mm -hmm. you know you don't want to let go of that hurt because you're like if i let go of that hurt i'm gonna get hurt again Mm -hmm. by the other person so i don't want to let go of that that's probably a part of the judgment thing that we're still working through <laughs> but you don't want to let go of that hurt because you don't want to expose yourself so what i think we have done uh, is that we really 
internally, individually. And he chooses me just as much as I choose him. And I don't have control over what he chooses and he doesn't have control over what I choose. Mm -hmm. But like, I choose to have a relationship with my brother, Yeah, you know? And I get teary when I say that, but like, you know, and he chooses that with me and we choose to put the hurt aside to try to work it out mm -hmm. over and over and over and yeah. over again, mm -hmm. you know? And I think that's what makes a difference. And no relationship really works without two people wanting to be in it, Correct. right? Mm -hmm. So, but what I do encourage you, if it feels like your sibling isn't really wanting to be in your life in some way, or they're just holding on to hurt, or they're disconnected, it does require them to want to be in relationship with you. But sometimes that clearing conversation and really looking at what role have you tried to play with that sibling is a starting point. Yeah. I mean, we wouldn't have been able to get to where we are without one person taking that shift. And in this case, it was her. So she, she started it and then I then felt it and then wanted to be a part of that shift. So came along. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that can make all the difference and you don't know until you try, mm -hmm. you know, but it does require this feeling inside of you of like, I want this relationship. Mm -hmm. It's hard. It hurts a lot. I feel like sometimes he doesn't understand me. I have the same feeling, mm -hmm. you know, um, or he judges me. I have that same feeling too. Mm -hmm. It's not just him, you know? And yet even with all of that, I choose to, to, to have this relationship be strong, you know? Yeah, just to call out whatever it is that is the feeling that comes up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's so many times I call him up and I'm like, you did this yesterday at dinner and like that really hurt. That was mm -hmm. annoying, you know? Mm -hmm. And we talk it out because we're, we're, we're really committing to each other. But the path to that often is you first need to have that clearing conversation yeah. so all of that shit that's sitting between the two of you that isn't even about the two of you it's about your parents it's it's about how they see him how he, they see me how we relate from their perspective that we've taken on you mm -hmm. know and so when you clear that out now there's space mm -hmm. for us to like have our relationship you mm -hmm. know and still, some of that stuff seeps in, and little by little, you... We still clear one thing at a time. Yeah. <laughs> as they come up. Yeah, definitely. So, I really hope that... I wanted to have my brother on, because, you know, it's it's insight into... I'm pretty awesome. <laughs> that, too. Um, but he is. He is really awesome. I mean, um, I'm going to cry. But, yeah. <laughs> You know, I say to my parents all the time, like, the best gift you gave me was my brother. And I really feel that to be true. And I'm grateful yeah. that we have the relationship that we do. And I get to share this life with you. Many more. Yeah. All right. Well. Thank you. Thank you. I cry in almost every episode with family members. <laughs> and, uh, and it's real. So um, if you liked this video, hit subscribe. Leave a comment. Would love to hear your relationship with your sibling. I know it can be hard. I've heard it through hundreds of my clients over the last 14 years of being a relationship coach. It can get really hard, but if you have a desire where you really would like to connect, you would like to release that burden of feeling like it's so hard with your sibling, there's a way, there's a way through that. There's a way to that, you know, even if it feels like your sibling is not willing to participate, there's a way through really a, shifting your side and releasing things on your side that creates an opening, a doorway, a window even to them coming towards you even energetically more than they are right now and that can make such a big difference in your life and if you're interested in the behind the scenes of my relationship with my husband we've been married for 16 years we just recently went through a ton of conflict over the last year and a half 
where we up leveled our relationship after having our son you can check that out now it is such a good interview we had so much fun doing it and i realized so much in the process of even having that conversation just like i did today all right i'll see you next time mm. bye bye